Hello, how's it going? Today, we're looking at the Well of Eternity again, and also Night Elves. But first, we're going to talk about the Dark Trolls. You ready? Let's go! Before the war with the Achaea, many of the troll tribes clashed with one another over hunting grounds and territory. However, there was one group of trolls that didn't really care about all of that. These trolls weren't fans of daylight and dwelled in caverns beneath Mount Hyjow. The nocturnal habits of these dark trolls began to change them over time, turning their blue skin to a shade of grey. Also, unlike other trolls, dark trolls longed for a peaceful connection to the natural world. They gradually migrated towards the centre of Kalimdor, crossing paths with a number of weird little creatures like fairy dragons. They also discovered a super sparkly lake of scintillating energy. It's the Well of Eternity, in it. The dark trolls were mesmerised by this discovery and decided to settle along the Welsh shores. Over generations, the energies from the lake suffused the trolls' flesh and bones. They transformed into highly intelligent and virtually immortal beings. They abandoned their ancient heritage and traditions. The mystics began worshipping the moon goddess Elun, who they believed was bound to the Well of Eternity itself. They claimed that during the day, she slept at the depths of the lake. Weird place to sleep if you ask me. The former trolls also discovered the name Kalimdor, and other titan forged words from communing with Elun and investigating artifacts scattered around nearby. Influenced by this language, they called themselves Kaldorai, which means Children of the Stars, or Night Elves. Baboosh. Mind blown. Night Elves used to be trolls. Trees, flowers, woodland creatures watched as the Night Elves flourished, and they brought this news to the Wild Gods of Hyjal. The demigod Cenarius took a particular interest in these newcomers. He liked the cut of their jib, and they liked the cut of his jib too, as they believed he was the son of Elune herself. Like some kind of moon, Jesus! The Night Elves lived in harmony with the Wilds for many centuries. They built their society around the Well of Eternity. The capital of this nation was called Elundris, which means the Eye of Elune, because they're obsessed with her. Some of the Night Elves were especially obsessed with her. They wanted nothing more than to unlock the secrets of the Well of Eternity. They studied the arcane energies of the lake, becoming talented sorcerers. Magic became an inseparable part of life and became the driving force to their culture. At this point, the Night Elves' most prolific leader came to power, Queen Ashara, and she's going to raise the Night Elves to extraordinary new heights, but also be a little bit responsible for their destruction as well. Queen Ashara embodied the most coveted traits of her people. Using magic, she constructed a breathtaking palace filled with the most powerful nobles, known as the Keldorai, or Highborn. They would answer to her every beck and call. The Highborn were gifted sorcerers. Some, like Lady Vash... Vashj... Vaj... Oh dear. They would serve as the Queen's loyal handmaidens. Others, like Lord Xavius, would consult the Queen in terms of governance and act as advisors. No matter what role they played, all of them occupied the upper echelon of Night Elf society. They believed they were better than everyone else. Obviously, the Lowerborn Night Elves weren't big fans of this opinion. They hated the Highborn. However, they didn't hate the Queen. They adored her, even renaming their capital to Zinashari, or the Glory of Ashara. That's how much they like her. The Night Elf civilization blossomed into a sprawling empire. Expeditionary forces were sent out to explore the world and spread the empire's borders. They founded dozens of outposts such as Shandaral in the northern forests of Moonsong, Thenrelaw in the Central Wilds, later known as the Barrens, and Eldrathalas in the southern jungles of Ferilus. On the western edge of Kalimdor, Ashara oversaw the construction of a huge temple to Elune, some bridges, and also some lakes. Once finished, these grounds were called Lathalazal, or Seat of the Sky. There was one place that Ashara avoided though, Mount Hyjal. Publicly, she was all like, yeah, we don't touch Mount Hyjal out of respect for our ancient kinship with the forests. But secretly, she just hated it. But she couldn't keep this secret from Moon Jesus. He'd watched the Night Elf Empire expand and had become increasingly annoyed by the Highborn's actions and arrogance. The vast bulk of the Night Elves were fine. They still lived in harmony with the land. But those bloody buggers at the top were starting to really bug him. As more time passed, the Night Elves started avoiding diplomacy and ignoring Azeroth's other cultures. The dogmatic beliefs regarding racial purity trickled down to the people's psyche making everyone a bloody racist. Small sporadic battles started taking place between the elves and the trolls. The trolls would always lose against the elves' magics. Ashara viewed the trolls as primitive and unenlightened and basically just a bloody nuisance rather than a real threat, so she struck a deal with the Zandalari. They'd stop it with the incursions, and in return, they could keep their sacred mountain. They begrudgingly accepted. They knew they stood no chance against the elves, but this fostered the trolls' deep resentment towards the night elves. Ashara was still obsessed with unlocking the secrets of the Well of Eternity. She believed that they'd only tapped the surface of the Fount's powers, so she pushed the Highborn to plumb the well's depths. These reckless experiments sent torrents of magic crushing through the twisting nether, and the demonic inhabitants within the nether were like, what was all that about? And then Sargeras and the Burning Legion were all like, 
What was all that about? Sargeras realised that he'd finally discovered the location of the fabled world soul Azeroth, and he was bloody excited. He gathered all of his rage, all of his forces, and now he just needs to find a way to get there. And we're leaving it there! How about that for a cliffhanger? Sargeras is back! Way. Tuesday, we'll be talking about the War of the Ancients, featuring characters like everyone's least favourite Storm Rage, Malfurion, and everyone's favourite Storm Rage, Illidan. Plus, you know, some more Burning Legion stuff. So if you want to see that, come back on Tuesday. Subscribe so you don't forget. If you enjoyed this video, you can press the like button, you can talk to me in the comments. But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!